Hello everybody and welcome back to the damn sofa. That's the damn sofa. This is my damn sassy sidekick, Mr. Roscoe P. Coltrane, and my damn name's Paul. I hope everybody is doing well out there. As usual, I want to give a shout out to everybody who makes the Sofa Squad possible. Thank you so much for being here. It would not be possible without you. Now y'all, today, I have heard the Sofa Squad. I'm here. Y'all have been like, Paul, please talk about Amber's testimony on the stand. Y'all, I, I mean, let me tell you what. I couldn't figure out what to use on the thumbnail, right? There are so many different options. The faces alone, I was like, please, God, give me throw that. So we're gonna be talking about that. Now, point blank period, I say this is one of the videos where I'm like, this might be a part one or two. Y'all, this is part one, okay, before we can get into it. Because when I, I was like, I'm gonna go through and like start watching this, I'm gonna do just, you know, some of the highlights. Y'all, I, I could literally comment on every word that comes across her lips, on every eyebrow contortion that she made. I mean, everything, right? So this is part one, so there's that. Now, also keep in mind, I do have a couple of other channels. One of them is like a podcast channel. If you like shorter, more to the point content, like updates, headlines, that kind of thing, sometimes I'll go live. No real schedule, just I'll pop on. That link's down below. I do have a channel where I review movies, mostly horror things, and I'm not that active on it, but I do have stuff over there, and I do, you know, let you know what I'm watching over there. So that's down below as well. Now, all that being said, y'all here at the sofa know my, ta my, my partner in crime, right? Y'all are going to absolutely scream at the level of cuteness about what I'm about to tell y'all. Y'all, Roscoe got his own little sponsor. Oh my, it is so adorable, y'all. So, he actually wants it. You want to introduce the sponsor today, Roscoe? See, yeah, Dad, I'd, I'd like to do that. I've been pretty happy with him so far. Um, so, make some damn room on the sofa. <laughs> Just joking. But he, he really does, y'all. So, seriously... Make some damn room on the sponsor. On the sponsor, make some damn room on the sofa because we do have a new sponsor this week. When they reached out to Roscoe, I was like, "Oh, hands down, yes!" And we have been loving it. So let's talk about it for a second. If y'all been following me, then you know that Roscoe is not only the Sofa Squad mascot, but he's my little everything. A lot of you might not know, but Roscoe, as well as the other dogs here, they're all senior dogs. So when Fuzzy reached out to Roscoe and I, we were totally on board. Fuzzy is a telehealth service for pet parents. That it offers 24-7 access to personalized pet care from veterinary professionals. From getting your pet's diet just right, to meeting their middle-of-the-night needs, or to finally figuring out what makes their breath smell that way, nothing is too big or small for a fuzzy call. Now, there's tons of articles as well as courses tailored to you and your pet's needs. Fuzzy can also recommend the exact right products for your pet, all of which are hand-picked by their established team of veterinary professionals and available at discounts exclusive to fuzzy members. Now, one of the features that I love is the live chat virtual vet consultations that are available 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, Roscoe has some known issues that are being addressed currently at his vet, but one morning recently, this cough that he has, it started flaring up a little bit. And with Fuzzy, I was able to go ahead and hop on there and just ask any questions I wanted to. And I was able to get help, guidance, and reassurance. Y'all, this was literally priceless, okay? And the person that I talked to, they were so helpful. They were so mindful of the situation. It made me feel so good and reassured about the whole situation. They followed up. They asked pictures. I mean, I cannot recommend that aspect of this enough. Right now, Fuzzy is offering my subscribers a free seven-day trial membership. Go to yourfuzzy.com slash reporting live from my sofa today to sign up. That's a free seven-day trial and access to exclusive member discounts on pet meds, supplements, food, and more at Y-O-U-R-F-U-Z-Z-Y dot com slash reporting live from my sofa. Again, yourfuzzy.com slash reporting live from my sofa for your free trial of Fuzzy with access to 24-7 personalized pet care and well-recommended products. Okay, y'all, so like I said, it's Roscoe approved, it's me approved, it's Bailey and Buster approved. Give it a shot. All the stuff that you need is down in the description below. 
let's go ahead and get into this y'all now i'm going to tell you this at the time of this recording i've tried recording this all night long here it goes it's thundering power went out earlier it's starting up again y'all it might be an omen I, I i'm just saying i mean that's the kind of stuff following this woman around amber so that being said roscoe is here for emotional support but also you know he doesn't really like the thunder and stuff so he wants to be held uh and i'm here for it so let's go ahead and start and we're just going to be looking at some of her testimony and i'm going to be commenting on it and probably rolling my eyes and possibly throwing up a little bit at times but we don't need to talk about that all right thank you all right thank you your honor will you please state your name yes it's amber laura heard and what is your address i live in yucca valley california and how old are you, Amber? I am 36. I just celebrated. Okay. And do you have a daughter? I do. Uh, she also celebrated her birthday recently. She's one. Jenna, I hate to be the one to be like this, y'all, but I mean, let me know in the comments if you were thinking of it. So first and foremost, I thought that the attorney said, do you have a dog? And I was like, oh my God, that poor dog, right? Okay, and I was just like, oh my God, you know she just went out and got that dog to make herself look good for this right then when i was like on the rewatch i was like oh my gosh she said daughter and i was like same thoughts but 10 times worse literally okay i was like this is this is now serving joan crawford mommy dearest right i mean this is unhinged okay but first of all so let's look at when she gets up there and she's like hello jury yep celebrated today 36 years old I mean, this is somebody, in, you know, I, I get it. Everyone gets coached on how to talk and all that kind of stuff. I get it. But on the same note, I'm just like, this is a trauma, traumatized human being getting up there, right? And she's just like, kind of like already right off the bat, like, you know, I am working this over. So I just wanted to point that out because we are going to see a lot of showmanship is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. And what is your profession? I am an actor, uh, mostly. Let's accentuate the word mostly, okay? I was like, if she says that she sells feet pics on OnlyFans, I was my girl, you and China just need to go hang out and be best friends, okay? Okay. Now, why are you here? I am here because my ex-husband is suing me uh, for an op-ed I wrote. And how do you feel about that? Now, real quick, before we get into it, can we just please make note at the one huge sentence in this? At the op-ed I wrote. Okay, number one, right? Number two, look at how immediately her demeanor changes. So we have gone from, hey there, I'm 36 years old. My name's Amber. I sell the foot pictures on the OnlyFans. <laughs> Got some movies coming out straight to Redbox. You know what I'm saying? To immediately like the... Um, I, a victim mode all this kind of stuff we are going to see throughout this if you go back to the forensic psychologist that was um or the criminal i can't remember if she was a forensic or criminal but uh, this is the last video i did um the characteristics that she was describing i'm like literally amber lives up to every last one of them within 60 seconds of testimony okay like, i'm just like like it was probably i just love the fact that watching all of her testimony you're literally like a team of people decided it was a good idea for her to get up and answer these questions in this way and i'm sure amber was like i'm gonna do it i've got control of the situation okay like you can't tell me any different i know i um i struggle to have the words. I struggle to find the words to describe how uh, painful this is. Um, this is horrible for me to sit here uh, for weeks and um, relive everything. Um, hear people that I knew, um, some well, some not my ex-husband, with whom I shared a life. Um, speak um, about our lives in the way that they have. Um, 
this has been one of the, this is the most painful and difficult thing I've ever gone through. Imagine, okay, so take all of those dramatics, which we're going to talk about, and place her at a restaurant complaining about the temperature of her hamburger. Okay, she would bring that same energy over that. It doesn't matter what it is, right? She would go into those same dramatics. Literally, the facial contortions just in those like 60 seconds, whatever it was that we just watched, I was like, this person is exhausting. Okay, and that right there, I'm like, guilty guilty judge slam the damn gavel down i don't care if it's a guilty not guilty damn trial i don't care if we if we don't have to say those words or not we need to say it right i'm not gonna be satisfied until we slam the damn gavel down and say guilty up in here okay i'm sorry but i mean seriously y'all i was just like is this serious i mean i wanted to crawl under the damn table and i'm at home by myself right that's how embarrassed i was for her. and so transparent and just this whole this is the hardest thing i've ever been through you know and i was like oh my god this is painful now like i've said in my previous videos about this i get that these are like actor type people so they're going to be dramatic i mean i'm allowing room for that right but even in that realm i'm just like this is bad okay it's just really really embarrassing so let's continue with the you know what show i had to write um i think i gave seven witness statements um under oath testimony i sat on the stand um for four days um under mostly cross-examination and up until this point it was the hardest thing i had ever had to do she absolutely loved every second of it. Don't let these lies fool you. She loved every second of it. She is in her realm. She is a victim. And again, go back to what the doctor said. She's living up to every bit of that. She is victimizing herself, dramatics, facial contortions, facial gymnastics, mental hoops, you name it. I mean, this whole thing about, I had to do all these witness statements and did it. I mean, cry me a damn river. And what did your father do for a living? My father um, broke horses and did construction. Had um, He painted houses um, and uh, hunted and fished, but that was for fun. And what did your mom do? She worked for the state of Texas. Um, let me just, since you talked about the breaking horses, can you just tell the jury what your role is in assisting your dad on that and what is involved in breaking horses? Objection leading. Can you just tell me about? O overruled. Um, you just got to stay on, basically. <laughs> uh, I, I would help him. I was more of a, a crash test dummy, you know, when you train a horse, you... It, it's a wild animal. It doesn't necessarily like to be um, ridden. And uh, there are people out there um, who are crazy enough, like my dad, to pick that as a profession, I guess. And he was really good with horses. And um, I was the son he never had. So it was my job to, you know, stay on. <laughs> Again, y'all, my damn eyes are going to have, I'm going to have a major headache by the time this video is done for how I'm rolling my eyes. So much going on here. So much going on. First of all, I, I mean, this analogy of you just got to <laughs> stay on. I was like, oh my God, the dramatics behind this. She, they sat behind in an office doing this and they were like, that's going to be good. There's not going to be a dry eye in there. Okay, so first of all, obviously she is trying to compare Johnny to a wild horse and herself being this. Now look at the different layers. This is like damn Dante circle up in here. Look at the damn, uh, or look at the level of, <laughs> I'm just talking to now. I'm like, look at the damn level of circles. Pardon my friend. Look at the different layers of victimization that she's put herself through here. So first of all, she was like, well, if you just got to stay on, you know, it's just a matter of staying on. They're a wild animal. They don't want to be ridden. And my father was crazy enough to do this, and I was his crash test dummy. So first of all, this is what I get from that. Number one, she's trying to align herself with having possible head trauma, getting knocked off, that kind of a thing, frontal lobe damage, that kind of a thing. Secondly, her father using her as a crash test dummy that type of situation. 
um, always staying the course, learning that, you know, okay, look, this is like a horse. This is why I kept going back. This is why I kept doing this. They were completely, I mean, this was the most transparent, cheesy ass testimony I've ever seen in my life. And again, getting up in the heels of what you've seen so far, I'm like, it takes balls. I'll give her that. I mean, I will give her that. I mean, this is such a high level. And again, I'm just going to throw this damn word out of narcissism, whether it's uh, borderline personality disorder, Order, histronic, whatever. I ain't no damn doctor. Y'all know that. Whatever it is, I mean, she is eaten up with it. And what, if anything, did you learn from your father about how to react to the horses? Well, with training horses, um, I guess the key, the the key things are to not show fear. Not get intimidated, not show fear, be tough and calm. Again, she's completely trying to line up excuses and whatnot as to her relationship with Johnny. She's aligning him with that, with this wild animal, not showing fear, this that, and the other. Because a lot of the stuff that does go on, and again, I'll say this, I've said it in other videos about this, and I'll say it again. One of the huge disservices that Amber is doing to people who are truly in situations that they are unable to get out of for any reason, uh, that they are unable to go seek out help or they have tried to and it has not worked and all that, is she is harming their voices or reiterating to them well guess i but you know see what's happening you know what i'm saying and so she is stealing other people's stories by honestly this absolute ridiculousness that she is up here spewing and so that's truly the i mean we can sit up here and i mean it's obviously a you know what show right i mean this is a damn near a joke um but she's stealing the voices for people who have truly been through this. And it's it's absolutely horrible what she's doing. And so she's trying to line this whole thing up with Johnny and come up with reasons, in my opinion, you know, as to why she kept going back, not being afraid of this, not being afraid of that, that type thing. Um, but again, with just the facial, I can't get past the facial expressions, nor can I get past how much they align with what the doctor testified to previously on the stand. And it's another reason why I'm just surprised that she has been on the stand for so long now we're not even getting into her cross-examination or the other doctor we're going to get to all that it'll probably be separate videos at this point but i mean this is just these are low ball easy underhanded pitch questions from her own attorney and you see what is coming to the surface this is a very disturbed person a very disturbed person so what types of things so where did you go to school when you were um, younger. I was a scholarship kid at a Catholic school um, growing up, uh, several different Catholic schools, but they were always in the other, you know, on the other side of town in the wealthier part of town. And um, I grew up quite um, working class and, uh, and, and thankfully with, um, you know, as long as I maintained an A average, I, uh, I, I enjoyed the benefit of a scholarship, and I did that until I realized that I could take my GED and SATs early, and I did that and placed out of school and effectively left school uh, at 16 years old, I believe. Now, this is her attempt at trying to relate to the jury. Obviously, she's, you know, trying to make the jury side with her. She wants to kind of, you know, bond with them. Most people are going to have a hard time bonding with her or finding some kind of normalcy. So she, of course, is going to want to not seem like a Hollywood type, right? She's going to want to seem normal, working class. You know, so notice the key point she hits on. I was a scholarship kid. You know, I went to schools that were on the other side of town. You know what I'm saying? She's not using these like linguistic things or whatever, like words, however you want to say it, to separate herself from, in my opinion, like what she is perceiving. She's making like these assumptions of the jury, right? To separate herself from like this Hollywood elite or whatever. And I'm like, girl, trust me, they weren't thinking you were Hollywood elite, right? It's like this much is clear. Like we've seen the movies. Okay. 
okay. <laughs> you know, nobody was concerned about that. You know, we all know how you ended up with Johnny. Okay. You know, it wasn't the Academy Awards. Uh, and certainly won't be from here on out. I'm just like, but this is what you run into, like, side, sofa sidebar. This is what you run into is in these dynamics like this i mean obviously johnny has been around forever we've talked about this you know he came up at a time in hollywood that again i'm just i'm not sure if that kind of stardom is replicable at this point anymore right i mean it's just a different world out there and so when you get like what i know in my time is like b-grade actors actresses that come up it's like a power dynamic or whatever and a lot of them will attach themselves to these a-list celebrities so on and so forth and i just feel like that was going on here and so it's almost like she's cashed her chips in because i can assure you after this i'm just like oh girl like no i mean i don't even know if the damn 99 cent rental rack's gonna be calling her ass for an audition anytime soon okay and <clears throat> what if any charitable work did you do when you were still young it started off as a, a requirement for the school I went to, and then I liked it so much, I think, because it, it meant I wasn't at home, and it was important to me is just to not spend time at home. Uh, and I... Mm -hmm. So first of all, the main takeaways in this are, you know, uh, first of all, I don't believe anything this woman says, right? Everything is rehearsed, everything is scripted, probably everything about this person, not just on the stand. What I'm seeing is somebody who has these go-tos, right? And that they utilize them throughout their whole life. And so you can never really trust, like, and she probably doesn't even know who Amber is, right? And so like this whole thing, like, it started off as charity work and through school and, well, I really liked it. Uh, so I started working the streets on a daily basis. You know what I'm saying? I'm just like, I'm not buying that. Um, if she was getting something out of it. So then she goes in again, everything circles back to I'm a victim. I'm lining up my next story to feel sorry for me or this. She plants the seeds because we're human, right? When she says, it, it, I, I wanted to be away from home. Where your natural thought is, well, what was going on at home? What was happening? Was it bad at home? You know what I'm saying? This is what it is. She just sets these stories up. And again, just in, I mean, I'm looking at here, this is five minute marker and I've edited this down, right? I mean, I don't know what it is on the video. This is just recording wise. If you were having a cup of coffee with someone that brought up this much damn drama in the first five minutes with them, hopefully you would be like, oh my God, I forgot. I have an appointment to go get my toenails ripped out. I've got to go. Um, and mostly soup kitchens and things involving children. I worked at the, um, with deaf kids for a while and uh, yeah, I, I love it. And when you worked with deaf kids, what if anything did you do to learn to be able to work with them? Objection leading and 404. And relevance, Your Honor. Overruled. Um, well, I, I taught myself how to sign basic sign language and then I um, I pursued it I audited a, uh, a translate um, a course at the community college which I ended up going to um, to get out of high school early um, later on but I would audit classes the teachers never wanted to kick the you know random 12 year old out of their class I suppose so I remarkably was able to audit uh, um, I think the majority of two semesters and that's also helped help me learn. Now, again, with this, you know, with the whole, it's for the children. We are the world. You know, again, if you look behind or read between the lines of their story, because I'm just like, hmm. She's sitting here talking about, I left school early. I did my GED. I placed out early. Now, I have heard of people. I mean, this is like a legitimate thing. But for her... I'm like, is that really what it was for, though? Or is there another story behind it? Because there usually is. You know what I'm saying? With people like her, right? So this whole thing of it all sounds very wonderful and lovely. Now, the thing is, is that especially in this clip, what I notice is she's trying to make it sound like this is a random question where she's like, oh, uh, um, 
I, I'm, I guess you're talking about the deaf children that I helped? Yeah. Uh, let me think here. And I'm like, girl, you practice this so much. She probably dredged up some class that she went in and listened in on for five minutes before they threw her out for, and probably hit her with a damn trespassing charge. You know what I'm saying? But she's like, one of, and I'm being dramatic with that. I don't know this. This is my speculation. But she's one of those type people that would take that moment and exploit it to the max to make herself look good. That's what these type people do. That's what makes them so sick. That's what makes them so dangerous. So how did you end up in Los Angeles? I use, I met, I did it. I did a small job in Texas uh, where... Again, slam the damn gavel down. Case, damn, closed, gill, T. Right there, the, what do you call it, Freudian slip, where I used, I meant, and then she, she got angry, I meant, you know, and I'm just like, yeah, I'm sure you did use somebody. Now, she'll paint this, your typical story that Hollywood wants to pump out, I was busting my butt and doing this and doing that, we're going to listen to some of it, and now, this is not exclusive to her, you know, but I think a lot of people paint this picture of a random can move to Hollywood and do A, B, and C, and anyone can have this happen and I'm like yeah that might be true but there's a reason why we see a lot of these Harvey Weinstein things you know what I'm saying happening or whatever um and so again I don't really believe her how she ended up in Hollywood story and I personally think that she used a lot of people along the way to get there I played a part in a movie and the actor in the movie that I was playing opposite had an agent visiting him from LA and I met her on set and she said that she had heard about me from another bit part I did. You know, I was taking jobs in Austin for really anything, to be an extra, to apply my, I did makeup once. I, um, you know, nothing, no job was too small or, you know, for me. So I, I put myself out there and she had heard about me and she said, I have heard about you in this town. and. I'd love to meet you in LA if you're ever out in LA. And I was like, um, oh, when can I come? Uh, and she made an appointment with me for the following week and I used all but $180 or something um, to get out there and that's, I landed. I didn't know anyone, uh, I was 17. Um, and I I've effectively ever been there ever since, I suppose. She worked Austin up one side and down the damn neck till she got there. I can tell you that. And you know, and I'm not trying. <clears throat> I'm not trying to sit here and say, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. I mean, this is you know, work it. What I'm saying for her is, I personally think she probably used and abused a lot of people to get to where she's at. Because if we look at what she did with Johnny, who knows the people she did horrible things to along the way blackmail did this to did that to to make her way through life because i think that this behavior is also like a currency for her right to get what she wants and to get where she needs so when you arrived in hollywood please tell the jury what you did to get moving there get going went straight to johnny depp's door okay i can tell you that she went straight to his damn door I uh, went to every audition, every casting, every meeting, every appointment that I could. I, I put myself out there. I didn't have a car um, because those were expensive. Um, so I took the bus around LA. It was before smartphones. I had a, a Thomas guide in my bag and a change of tank tops. Um, not that it mattered, but I went to about 10 audition sometimes a day and would change clothes if I needed to in the back of you know the bus I was taking and I just hustled from one audition to the other and uh, I got a bit part on one thing and then I got a bit part on another thing and then eventually my roles kind of became more important or bigger and um, it's been a slow progression, I guess, since then, you know, of doing either tiny bit parts in bigger movies or doing, you know, larger roles in movies that no one would see. And I guess, you know, it still is kind of like that. 
So again, she's describing this whole thing that probably a lot of people have this story of going to Hollywood and absolutely having to hustle or be homeless and starving, right? Um, Someone that we've seen with the behavior of what she's done, again, I'll just say it one more time, God only knows the people she victimized to make it all the way to her starring role as Johnny Depp's girlfriend. I was so in love with this person because when it was good, it was so good. You've never felt love like that. At least that's how it felt. <laughs> so much. I felt like he recognized me and I recognized him and there was just something there that that is the love of my life. And he was. Ugh, I mean, it just has fatal attraction written all over her. Bunnies on the damn stove. I mean, come on, Johnny, right? I'm just like, I mean, these two... I'm just trying to imagine, like, a normal evening at home for them. I mean, ugh. He was, but he was also this other thing. He was also this other thing. And that other thing was awful. Awful thing that would come out and take over. And it was, you couldn't see the... Johnny, I loved it. underneath it. It was this other thing. Now, one thing I think is interesting with these last two clips we've watched is I think that, number one, he could easily probably be saying the same thing about her, right? Because we've seen just the evidence alone. She seems to be exhibit the same type of stuff, right? She seems to be this, like, horrible person beneath the surface. Now, I'm sure Johnny was no walk in the park, right? And I'm not even trying to sit here and say anything about abuse or anything, but just, you know, it, it, anybody who's partying hard and doing that kind of stuff, I mean, that's just going to come with, you know, drama, right? I mean, I get it. Um, I do not personally think that he abused her, um, not in the context that she tried to paint out at all. I think it was quite the opposite. I think that she abused him. I don't think he put up with it. I think that's what he knew. I think that's kind of the background he came from with his own mother. Um... This is a glaring example of why you never get married. I mean, this is 15 months, y'all. Get to know somebody, y'all. I mean, good God, get to know somebody, y'all. Again, the facial contortions she just went through. She must need to take breaks every few minutes to let her damn face rest. Can you imagine at the end of the day? Like, I didn't think it would be possible to be like, I like to say my face is tired. You know what I'm saying? Like my face has a physical feeling separate from that of my body and it's exhausted. But I think if somebody could say that, she would be the one. And no one told him. No one was honest with him. No one, you know, he'd pass out in his own vomit. He'd lose control of his body. His, you know, he'd lose control and everyone would clean up after him. I cleaned up after him. Now, she's up there 100% loving, saying that he is shitting his pants, okay? She absolutely is loving doing this. This is another form of humiliation that she is doing to him. She's acting like it's this horrible thing. The feigning concern is absolutely fake, in my opinion. Again, I'm not a doctor or anything. But she is loving sitting up here trying to talk about he pissed his pants and I had to clean up after him. I mean, it is what it is. She's loving doing this to him. I mean, this man lost control of his bowels and I cleaned up after him. His, his, his security cleaned up after him, changed his pants in front of me. He would pass out in his own sick. Again, she's loving every second of this. One thing we're going to talk about and see woven throughout this is the way that she is shaming and blaming, but a lot of shaming his substance abuse, his sobriety. She weaponizes this against him, right? And it's like a whole other conversation or whatever. But the way that she also wraps it up and feigning to care about him, it's all very icky. And so when she allegedly did care about him in a relationship, I imagine this was still going on, right? Because I'm of the train of thought that obviously they had to have had an initial attraction, right? There had to be something there. Whether it was just sexual, whether it was whatever. But I really feel like she probably looked at him as whether it was a meal ticket or her way to stardom or something right 
I just feel like that's what he was to her very early on. And I think she's such a conniving person that this is where we see all this evidence she was racking up against him. Taking the pictures of him passed out. All this stuff that she's talking about, like, I was having to clean up at Panates, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, yeah, but you were photographing him like this. You know what I'm saying? So this whole thing of like, you're disgusted by it and concerned, but not, you were, you were still... You were taking pictures of him in the state. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you do that to your partner? Like, I mean, it doesn't even make sense. You know, and then he'd walk around saying he didn't have a problem. Until he did. Until he couldn't support it anymore and he'd get clean and he'd get sober. And then he was this thing again. <laughs> this thing that made me feel so loved. That made me feel like... <laughs> Like my like my soulmate, as cheesy as that sounds, I just felt like he knew me. If I was in the jury and she was talking like that and kept making direct eye contact, a hundred percent. I mean, I would just be like, please, please stop doing that. Does that mean jury? I'm like, stop, just stop doing that. Like, judge, can we please with the gavel? We just give me the gavel. I need the gavel. You know what I'm saying? Like, they need to hand out little miniature gavels so we can control people like this. But notice, I don't see any real tears ever coming out of this woman on the stand, okay? Like, the whole thing. And I'm just like, these are the kind of performances she needs to be doing in the audition to get out of this whole direct red box thing, okay? This, I mean, not that it's probably an option anymore, because I'm just like, if there was an Illuminati, right? If this thing is real, I'm not, I don't know about all that, but I know the word this would be a time where something might happen because, I mean, this girl right here, I'm just like, girl, this is all sorts of bad. I can't imagine her ever working again after this. Right? I just can't see it happening. And I recognize something in him. There's some part of my makeup and my background or something that I just got it. And I loved him and understood him. It, it just got so scary, the other part of him. And in June, I wanted... That scary part she's seen in him, I think she recognized that. I think that's the only time that she could probably see, how do you say it? She saw her eyes through his eyes through her eyes or something like that, you know what I'm saying? I mean, come on, let's be honest. I wanted to leave him. I wanted to, I didn't want to leave him. I wanted to want to leave him. I wanted him to get better. And he expressed to me so many times when he was in that period of getting clean and sober, he would tell me, you saved my life. Baby girl, you saved my life. Everyone else was saying that to me, and I believed it. You know, if everyone else was saying it, he was saying it. I thought, just like his other friends who had gotten clean and sober and stayed that way, his older friends, these rock stars that he hung out with that had, like, gotten clean and sober and they had 20, 30 years, something, you know, I thought, and Johnny told me he w would be that person, that he was going to be that person. And I believed it. Again, the facial expressions, the, the dramatics about, you know, getting sober, doing this, doing that. I believed it. Again, notice how even in this where it's all feigning concern for him in this, she is still pivoting herself as the victim, right? I believed it. I thought it was this. I'm like, girl, now she will say I believe that she was 25, he was 50 or whatever. I'm like, did you not Google Johnny Depp? And you know what I'm saying? It's like, this would be like if somebody was talking about, I got with Axl Rose and I was shocked that the drama and drugs, in, you know, followed. What? You know what I'm saying? No, I'm not trying to put Johnny and Axel in the same category. But, I mean, again, I've said this before, Johnny's just Johnny, right? I mean, we know this about the dude, right? This is not a secret. He's not been trying to hide this. It's a thing, right? And I don't, again, I don't know, none of us will ever know what went on behind closed doors. None of us will ever know what he told her, what she told him, but, you know. I'm sure he did have moments of, you know, sobriety. This, I get it, right? But for her to weaponize it for her own benefit is disgusting and appalling to me. 
I had so much, I looked at that man twice my age, you know, I was 25, looking at this man twice my age, and I saw hope and, like, promise. I had so much hope. So much hope for a big-ass payout, if you ask me. Also, side note, I keep waiting for her in this to be like, and I just had to stay on like I did with daddy's horses. And if she did do that or say that, I was going to pick the laptop up and throw it. Okay, I was prepared to go out and buy a new laptop. I was just like, if, I, I will have to throw it. I will have to throw it. Because, and I was like, a hundred. she probably will at some point. Like, probably in the closing arguments, they will end it with that. And I will literally put my hand to the damn TV screen. And I wrote this letter to myself, among many letters to myself. Objection, because I thought, say. All she did was refer to that she wrote it. She isn't saying what she said. I'll overrule for that. Thank point. you. Okay. I wrote that letter because I thought it would be read to him. I could read it to him. I could say it to him in intervention, you know, in help. And he would, he would later thank me for as he did, as he used to thank me all the time for saving his life. Just, I... I am sure she loved the whole role of everyone saying, you really saved Johnny's life and you saved my life, baby girl. I mean, she was eating that up like a hungry little dog in the bowl. Did there come a time later in June that you finally met Johnny's kids? <laughs> Um, yeah, I, um, again, y'all, I cannot with the faces that she makes. <laughs> I'm just like, how do you even do that? How does one even make these faces? I mean, the little micro things that she does is so bizarre. And so now this part, I'm just like, oh God, like here, she's going to put on the performance of her damn lifetime now, right? Because this is 100% where she has to completely pull off being a human being. And y'all, I'm sorry, but it's going to be a real tough thing for her to do. <laughs> I finally met them in the summer of 2013. I had been with Johnny for over a year, maybe like a year and a half at this point, is my best guess. And I was dying to meet them, you know, dying to get to know these kids. I felt like I knew them already. Uh, I had his daughters, uh, and actually, and Jack's, it, both, both of his kids' art on my fridge, and I had never even met them. You know, Johnny had brought them over one day and kindly given them to me, and I had them up on my fridge because I felt like I knew them, just how much he talked about them. And So, yeah. So a couple of things with this. Again, every, kind, every time I talk, I'm going to probably say the facial contortion thing, so let's just go ahead and just give the whole damn video that statement and just stamp the rest of the video with that, right? We'll, we'll speak to it on some extreme ones, which I mean, this was a pretty extreme one. Anyways, but she strikes me as the type, and again, this is all allegedly because I don't know, but she strikes me as the type that would be like jealous of the children, right? And so it's almost like that's why she's like over the top. Because you know how like a lot of times like especially like second marriages or whatever or situations like this where it's like you know it's a big thing that you connect with a new person's children from a previous marriage right this is i mean major right the kids come first okay so someone who is attuned and astute at having to manipulate social dynamics she's gonna know that she has to really you know, razor wire in on the scenario, right, with the children. Um, so the whole thing, I had the artwork on the fridge, you know, and I, I really wanted to meet them, and I'm just like, yeah, you strike me as the type that completely would get jealous of the children. Um, you know, and again, I don't know what his, Johnny's, like, custody situation is, how often he had, like, I don't know any of that. Um, but regardless... I just, I, I can't imagine at all 
an authentic like mother vibe coming from Amber, right? I'm not seeing that because I don't see any kind of a motherly, no, I'm sorry. I don't see any kind of an authentic vibe coming from her to begin with, let alone anything like that, right? When you run into these character types who literally have no clue who they are themselves, right? Because I think that's a thing with Amber that uh, for me that I see is I'm like, this is just a person who's completely empty and full of everyone else around them for survival, like whatever it might be, you know, whatever the damn Dodger said earlier. Um, they could never be there for anyone else in that capacity, especially that which we expect, you know, usually out of a parent. There was a plane ride to Russia with Johnny, do you recall that? Yes. Well, tell the jury about that particular event. Oh, uh, well, that was the first and last time I ever um, <laughs> decided it would be a, a decent idea to do drugs with Johnny. Okay, first of all, I'm just coming off of the trip to CrimeCon, Las Vegas. You know, if y'all watch me, you know that I'm in North Carolina. So just that time zone change literally has messed me up for like over a week. I can't imagine like at all on a plane ride trip to like another country like that right now. I'm like, that sounds horrible. Um, so this segment we're about to watch here with this whole thing about the MDMA, I mean, I can't roll my eyes hard enough because she is going to try and just walk her way out of this. She, Little Miss Thing right here is going to try and play this off so innocent, right? And again, I will come at this a hundred times over. The the symptom, the the traits that the doctor was describing about, you know, minimizing one's own behaviors in something, but magnifying them in others like blaming others but not taking accountability for oneself and all that i mean this is so present in these things right here all the way down to the way she introduced it well <laughs> that was the first and last time i ever decided it would be a good idea to do drugs with johnny now first of all notice so she's you know doing a little bit of the self-depreciating she is owning the situation by like that's why they're introducing this right because they're gonna be like, well you've done this with him right uh, i mean that's obvious but immediately placing the blame on him you know uh, so we know something went on with what what's up johnny um i did mdma with or <laughs> did mdma with him on the plane which was as stupid as it may sound um i just had never i was very against obviously the cocaine had been a problem. I was very much against him using cocaine. I was against the drinking, supportive of the sobriety, I, you know, but I'm 26 maybe uh, ish. And I, w I wanted, you know, I had never heard of anyone making MDMA uh, like what I had. I had done MDMA before, you know, I thought it's a lovey drug. It's a, you know, it's like, a kind of I never knew anyone to uh, get violent on it I mean we're talking damn crickets okay in that courtroom all this talk about sobriety all this talk about these drugs she is gonna try and sell to this damn jury after all of that she is completely like okay with having done and then choosing to do MDMA with Johnny Depp on a plane to Russia of all damn places. Are you kidding me? Again, give me the damn gaffle and, and this BS right now. And she, she's falling all. She was not getting the reaction, so she's like falling all over herself. And I'm just like, girl, you. You might have gotten the reaction if it was like pot, okay? Like people would have been like, well, yeah, you know what? Miss Tammy, she just you know, smoked a doobie in the bathroom. I hope that's okay, judge. You know, but this whole thing was just going to try to be like, we decided to do. I And if I'm correct, I think MDMA is ecstasy, right? And I'm just like, that sounds horrible. Like, why would you want to do that on a little plane? This sounds horrible, okay? It sounds like a really bad idea. And all the drama that has ensued, and so this just tells me, I'm like, really? I, this is the only, no, I don't, but I think she was right along with him doing drugs and stuff, personally. So, but let's see what else she says about it. And, um, I, you know, I thought, well, this is a relatively contained environment. 
maybe this will be different. Maybe I can be a good cop and be part of the, you know, like I don't have to be the lesbian camp counselor all the time, as you would say. You know, I can maybe be the fun girlfriend. Okay, so first of all, when she's like, this is a contained environment, I'm like, yeah, you're on an airplane and you're going to roll. Okay, that sounds horrible. I don't even know why that would even, why would you even want, like, why? Can you match? I just, I cannot, y'all, I'm not joking, y'all. I'm still triggered over that damn airplane just in Las Vegas. I'm trying to imagine doing that just for six hours and rolling the whole time. And that's just, whatever. Anyway, so, again, look at how she's like, well, I was going to be, like, the. I didn't want to be the camp counselor girlfriend, and, you know, I want to be the fun girlfriend. Again, she's trying to alleviate placing the blame onto him. It was for him. I wanted to be this. I wanted to be, you know, re relax and all this kind of stuff. Let's see how that uh, panned out for her. And I learned the hard way that that was not happening. <laughs> um, so what happened? Well, we took um, we took MDMA. I took a, a capsule. Um, it's like a powder in a capsule. I took a capsule and Johnny took uh, several. I didn't count, but, um, you know, it's very different when you see someone take one versus a handful of something. But nothing seemed to set any alarm bells off. And it, things were going fine until... Um, I took one capsule and he took several. I wasn't counting, but it's different when you see someone take a handful. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just like she just she contradicts herself so many times and her main goal is just, just to try and trash him as much as she can right and then of course I, I love the ending thing right there it was all going fine until until the flight attendant got involved the flight attendant came by was engaging with us uh, I, I I don't think that they're really it felt like it was before the effects of the drug um, took over, it was, so it was relatively quick, soon after we first took our dose, if you can say, and the flight attendant, um, Johnny offered her some, she of course said no, and then after some back and forth between them, Johnny convinced her that it would be fine, so she acquiesced and took uh, MDMA with us. It's just... Okay. That sounds even more horrible okay so now we have to go on the assumption that first of all we're not the assumption we have to ask is this true number one right um i'm gonna get to the question that i'm gonna ask y'all about this in a minute but let's let her continue telling the story because listening to this i'm like yeah this is sounding creepy but again because it's coming from amber and i don't believe anything i need to like have solid proof like did this truly happen right because another whole thing with this is i'm just like really like the flight attendant's gonna take mdma like that's her job right there i don't know how that role works with like private flight attendants and stuff like that like i don't know if, how that works like if they're employed by is that johnny's personal staff like you know what I'm saying or is it like by a company I don't know how that works but again because it's Amber you know I'm not really 100% believing this but let's continue to listen and then I'll, I'll get you the question I'm going to ask the sofa squad and within you know a few minutes go by and sh cl the, the same thing happened um, that happened on the mushrooms uh, at Hicksville uh, with the woman Kelly Sue who I've told you about uh, flight attendant got friendly with me, but just friendly, just like MDMA friendly, you know, was kind of, I'm a woman, he's a man, so she was naturally, I think, more comfortable with me physically. She kind of leaned into me and kind of sat on the arm of the chair I was sitting in. I mean, after all, she she's on drugs, and um, Johnny uh, grabs grabs her hand and tells her not to touch me, and she kind of reacts. Okay, here's the question that I come to the Sofa Squad with. A show of hands down in the comment section. How many of us think, if this is true, how many of us think so far, based on what we have seen of Amber, that she would be the type to instigate a scenario of coming on to the flight attendant, flirting with the flight attendant, trying to make Johnny jealous, trying to 
initiate something herself, trying to create some kind of drama. Because when I'm listening to this, I'm like, yeah, this sounds like completely awkward. And again, I don't, I don't know all the vibe here. And again, I, I'm commenting on this, not having seen like I. This is the chunk that I'm commenting on, right? So this is like my first like bam right here of this testimony right here. So. If you know more at this point, by the time you watch this, it's probably going to be several days from here. And this is Friday that I'm putting this out. So even after I've finished recording this, I'm going to keep watching, right? But it was just so much to go over. Anyways, um, but listening to this, I could just see this going down where I'm like, oh, Amber seems like the total type that if this really went down this way, that she would be like very flirty for a couple of reasons. Number one, I mean, she is into girls, right? She's had, you know, she's dated both sides of the fence. Also, if she was wanting to protect her assets, meaning Johnny, she would be in her best interest to her try and control the scenario by flirting and making herself more open to the flight attendant. Now, I do believe that one thing that could have gone on, like say this really did pop off like this, like super creepy that he would want to give her, you know, ecstasy, um, and that that would even go down that way. It's already creepy enough that they're doing ecstasy together on the damn airplane. But I could see where if she's a female, well, why would you want to do that? Why would you take ecstasy with Johnny Depp and Amber Heard on a damn airplane? If uh, why, like what, uh, like why? It doesn't even make sense, okay? It sounds horrible. It sounds absolutely horrible. It doesn't even make sense. If she did that, that's absolutely just absurd to me. So, I, I, there seems to be, I just don't believe the story. Um, in a way, uh, like, you know, like she's defending herself and was trying to clar clarify. And um, <laughs> he grabbed her by the wrist and slammed it down on the table and told her he could break her wrist. And I remember thinking, I've heard this before. Now, again, we hear all of these things that she comes up with, with these different versions of, you know, Johnny's anger and Johnny's this, and he grabbed her wrist and he grabbed my arm and he did the, did, 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 yeah, kind of a thing. Um, the situation with this particular thing on the airplane with this, and again, Amber will say like, oh, she went up to the front, she was hanging out, she was doing this. I mean, I just find it weird that other witnesses and stuff and people, you know, when you start putting the pieces of the puzzle together, this isn't the same Johnny that other people describe. Now, again, this doesn't mean anything. We've seen so many other instances coming from Hollywood in these, especially these later years of these people being exposed. But so much that has come from this, again, this just seems odd. And I also, I'm just like, if you knew, if you had run into this scenario, and I'm speaking on Amber's part here, where if this is... Up, this is what always happens. This is how it goes. Da, 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 da. Why in God's name then would you do ecstasy, MDMA, whatever it is, on the airplane with him? Why? Why would you do that? And then end up in this situation. Like then just if this is what it is with him, it's always this way, then just let him do it and be an asshole, right? And then just kind of I mean, you know, do what you have to do to protect yourself and land in Russia in one piece, right? Um it, it just, it just, it baffles me, the story. It just, it baffles me. Cries instantly, denies it, is so apologetic. Go, eventually, he lets go. She goes to the front of the plane where the flight attendant, you know, normally hangs out and the doors close. And I don't see her much of that whole flight. Again, do we know... Like, I mean, I'm going to Google this when this is over with, but I'm just curious if anybody in the comment section has ever worked on these kind of these kind of situations of private planes, jets, and all this kind of movie stars. I mean, are these like people employed by Johnny? Is this employed by a private company? Like, how does this work? Because when I'm listening to this, I'm thinking, well, this girl's going to get fired. If this really happened, unfortunately, I mean, this girl's going to get fired. She did drugs on the plane with the people flying, right? It doesn't sound like, well, I mean, there is some kind of like simple assault if he grabbed her wrist and was like, you know, don't look at Amber or whatever. But again, I just get this. Amber is the type, in my opinion, that would cause this kind of drama and then back up like, whoa, what happened? What happened? You know what I'm saying? Like that type person. Because the people that I've run into like her do this kind of stuff. <clears throat> uh, we land in Russia. And I don't really remember 
you know, any, there was, I don't recall any violence on the plane um, between Johnny and I, but I remember feeling this tension because I was wondering when uh, it was going to aim at me. So again, no violence, doesn't remember the violence on the airplane. If that happened on the damn airplane, first of all, I mean, I'm trying to think, if Matt and I were going to a movie premiere, one of our movies coming out <laughs> in Russia, and we got on the damn airplane and decided it was a good idea to do that and that went down, I mean, there would be nothing left to be said on the airplane, right? What would you say after that? And I mean, I guess if this behavior is normalized, I'm just trying to like go on the assumption that this is like true, right? Which I just don't feel it is, but it's like, what would you even have left to say? I mean, there's nothing left to say after that. That is so toxic and unhealthy. Even if it didn't go down, but you really did do the MDMA together on the airplane, again, I'm like, that that sounds terrible. The come down alone and then getting off the airplane. Imagine coming down like that and then being like, I have to get off an airplane and deal with the press. Wasn't an affair, wasn't, you know, and I'm trying to argue and defend myself at the same time. And um, at one point, Johnny just shoves me like, I mean, just shoves, shoves me hard. I fall back onto this glass table. Um, I catch myself on the table. Um, I don't know how uh, some furniture got knocked around. There was a, you know, I, I, I'm trying to stand up for myself. I'm trying to stand up, literally. I'm not, you know, at this point, I don't even try to hit back or try to run. I'm in this hotel room trying to do my best to fight mostly the verbal accusations, but also I try to stay on my feet, you know. She's just trying to stay on. This would have been a perfect time for her to round that this back out to that horror story and been like, and just like back in 1985 or whenever the hell I was a kid, I was just trying to stay on, just like my daddy told me out in them pastures. Um, at some point, uh, Johnny whacks me in the face, and I don't even, I don't remember feeling pain or like awareness of my nose or anything. I just, I don't remember thinking that. I remember kind of crying and feeling, I went into the bathroom and I, I wanted him to have a, like, I, I, I just remember wanting him to realize what had happened. I wanted him to kind of snap out of it. I wanted him to care. I wanted him to realize what was going on because a big part of this, I felt like he wasn't aware. There was a sense that he didn't know what was going on. Now, another thing I find interesting with her is the amount of photographic evidence that she has on a lot of this stuff, but also the absence of photographic evidence of a lot of this stuff. I remember just wanting Johnny to say sorry. I wanted him to realize it. It's so stupid, but I like the emotional part. You know, I just wanted him to acknowledge that this was, um, that he, like, he could hurt me, you know, and... I wanted it to be okay. I didn't want him to think I was interested in this flight attendant. I didn't want him to think that I would be capable of cheating on him. I was in love with him. I wanted, you know, I just wanted things to be okay. I didn't want him to think I was capable of cheating on him. I'm like, really, did you just say that? You know, I didn't want him to think I was interested in this flight attendant. You know, and I'm just like, I, you know, she probably was wanting to party, not the flight attendant, but Amber. She was probably like, yeah, let's party, let's let's throw down, or, I mean, she's probably making an ass out of herself. I mean, I just, you know, and I hate to sit here and go that route, but because her testimony has just been so, well, blasphemous, I just don't believe a damn word of it, and because so much of her stuff is just BS, I just have to go to the worst case scenario with it. Johnny was uh, upset that he had to sell the boat. Uh, and he was uh, off the wagon again, but he didn't want to tell his kids, so he was hiding it from them. Uh, he was putting it in um, coffee cups. Now, again, this is one of the parts that I feel like she is using this as like a shaming type thing. Maybe he was hiding this from his kids, hiding the alcohol in coffee cups. I'm like, that's very cliche. Uh, but maybe he was doing that. I don't know. Um, but again, she just seems to use his sobriety or lack thereof at times as a, another tool to weaponize against him. Um, 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 
I was very, very, very much in love with this whole family now. And he's saying I'm embarrassing to him. And that somehow stuck in, in, in me more than the, I could fucking kill you. It just sounded like hyperbole. It sounded like something he was just saying, but the, the names that he was calling me were kind of just pushing me up against the wall by my neck, you know? I, Okay, y'all, so she ends on a real high note there, right? I mean, we've got choking, we've got this, we've got that. Um, again, do I believe most of what she says? Absolutely not. Do I think that she is making a lot of this stuff up? Absolutely. Do I think that they were in an incredibly toxic relationship, both of them adding to that? A hundred percent, okay? I am not trying to sit here and say that Mr. Johnny Depp was, you know, and at no fault here. Absolutely, he had his own things going with him, his own demons, whatever you want to call it, okay? Um, this, These were two people who had no business being together at all, okay? Thank God they're not together. For both of their sakes, humanity and themselves, the children, everything, right? Um, but on that note, I do think that he was abused in this, and I do think she was the abuser, and I think she's abused lots of people. And like I've said before, and I'll continue to say it, I think she's abusing people who have authentically been abused by doing what she is doing. And I think she's abusing numerous people. I think she's shaming him with his sobriety. I think she's using that as a weapon against him. Um, I think she, you know, the way that she uh, took pictures of him in these states and then claims to be concerned about him, I mean, I just think it's all all BS. Um, there's no telling who she has blackmailed along the way. The facial contortions, the lying, the rehearsed state, the lack of tears. I mean, it is cringeworthy, but it's also like psychologically fascinating, right? Because, I mean, I, I mean, I would think like psychology classes and whatnot are having a field day with this because there's so much going on. I, I mean, and it just, it doesn't stop giving. I mean, it just does not stop, right? This, I, I did not think that this would be the trial of the damn, you know, year, right? I mean, I did, absolutely had no idea that this trial would end up being this way. I usually could care less about celebrity trials. Now, if you've been watching my coverage on them, you know that I'm like, oh, Johnny Dub, you know, I, my memories of him and whatnot. Um, but then just getting into the details of this and seeing just how insanely off kilter she is, I'm like, oh, what? But the scary part is this, when you reel this back in and you peel away the Hollywood tinsel town of it, we watch these kind of cases here on the sofa all the time, right? And a lot of times they don't end in this way. They don't end up in these million dollar lawsuits. They end up in people wiping their entire families out, people doing horrible, horrible things to their children, to their spouses, things of this nature. Um, and luckily, everyone is still alive in this scenario because the behaviors that I've seen, I'm like, oh, this is, yeah, really, really bad things could have happened here if they, this had gone unchecked, you know what I'm saying? So, like I said in the beginning, I'm gonna continue, I'm gonna go keep watching it now. I had to stop it somewhere <laughs> or else this could literally just be nonstop, right? Um, if there are specific parts of the, um, testimony and things like that you want to see let me know send me a link uh because i'm just going to keep watching stuff that y'all have sent me and commenting on it this is one of them so thank you for the suggestion uh, i mean there was so much going on here this is a great one to comment on i really appreciate you suggesting this uh a couple of you did actually so thank you um so that's it so again don't forget to check out our sponsor roscoe's down here he's on the phone checking them out looking up some of the articles right now um anyways i appreciate you self a squad and until we meet around the damn sofa with mr roscoe and mr damn paul i'll see y'all soon